Hey there, guys. Gunther Glory here. Doing a little review on my survival backpacking fishing kit. Up here, now, as the title says, it's freshwater. I live in an area, mostly freshwater, uh, that is right around me. Freshwater, there's a stream with trout in it less than 500 yards from my apartment. And then there's lakes within five miles, a reservoir with a dam, all kinds of stuff. And more streams and rivers within 10-mile radius. Some are even stocked with trout by the state, and a lot of them are filled with bass. Now, here in New England, we have a lot of freshwater species. In Connecticut, we have, you know, ava you know abundance of panfish, such as bluegill, uh, uh, bluegill, sunnies, sunfish, we call them, uh, white perch, bass, trout, American eel. There's even American eel in some lakes, uh, catfish, bullhead catfish, uh, you know, trout, and we have Atlantic salmon in some lakes, in some streams, rather. But this is a one-gallon hefty bag, a Ziploc kind of freezer bag. That way I can put more stuff in it. But I have, first off, I have my fishing line. Rod-wise, I'm going to do a video on my survival rod, uh, which you can, which I don't use, but you can make one. I can make one out of a beer bottle, duct tape, and a, and a spool of fishing line. It's really simple, but I'll do a video on that. But I'm going to Cabela's later today. Sorry if you're missing out there. And I'm going to be buying a couple of uh, other items for fishing this year, some ammunition if they have some that I need in stock, and then a uh, collapsible camper's fishing pole. But And then I have my little 22 Win Mag ammo case. Again, utilizing this, please check out my other video, which goes into a review on how these can be waterproofed and how they will float if you pack them properly, how they will be really, really buoyant. Uh, and then eventually I might do a video with a bunch of these, filling them up as, you know, one of them, how I would have them set up in my backpack. I have one with fire tinder equipment in it, uh, like a fire striker, cotton balls, that kind of stuff. And then one with this, and then one that has water purification uh, stuff in it. And they're really modular, and they are compact. And then I have these. I'm going to get more different sizes, probably a uh, 6 and an 8 or a 2 or something like that. Uh, well, these are number 2. Uh, Eagle Claw Snells. Inside the ammo case, fishing box, we'll call it tackle box now, I have, it's, you know, really compact, really closed nicely still too. I have two foam uh, si uh, bobbers that are weighted for better casting. I would be using these. Problem is, it's hard to get them to close in there and then have, you know, they because they are, you know, Circles, round, whatever, balls. <laughs> but also then I have split shots. I have in here a bag with paper clips. I'll show you why paper clips in a minute. Uh, egg sinkers, three eighths of an ounce, and then three snap swivels. I also have in this bag here an assortment of hooks. There's about 20 hooks in here, about that. Uh, a couple Aberdeen hooks. A couple octopus circle hooks and some wide gap hooks. Mainly the assortment there is for bass and panfish. But inside here, where I have my um, paper clips, I, I can I'm going to show you on one I already have done here, so it saves time. But I took this paper clip. I was trying to make a hook like this. It came out really shitty. I was trying to make a double type trap, whatever. <laughs> Look, that came out horribly. So I then took this other one I had. I originally had five in here. Now I'm down to one, two, three. This one here, I cut it with my multi-tool and made this. Only thing I have to do now is I need to actually sharpen the tip here with the file that is on my multi-tool or a hook hone. I have one of those in my basement made by Rapala. Basically, I just bent it around made an eye on it. It's not perfect. It'll work, though. Perfect doesn't mean shit. Functionality is where it's at. That was probably the lamest thing I'll ever say when it comes to, you know, how stuff should be when you're prepping. <clears throat> it doesn't have to look awesome. It could be, you know, as you could look as homeless as you want. As long as you know what you're doing, you're good. You could look like a mountain man. Doesn't mean you're a mountain man. <laughs> that made no sense. <laughs> but yeah, got the made out of a paper clip. I have a couple here. I got all large ones because that way I can make a bunch of hooks. I can probably make out of this one is where I made that, that hook out of either probably two more hooks out of this, which is perfect. 
So, you know, and that's if I'm, you know, I just have it. I don't plan on ever being stranded in this area for more than three days unless I want to be stranded for longer than that, if you get what I mean. If I don't care if I'm stuck in the woods, I might just stay. Eh, rescuers, they can, eh, I'll wait. I'm good for, I have enough stuff for a week, and they say they can be here tomorrow. <laughs> I'll just hide. But, yeah, and that all fits into here. And the reason I said fresh water and not salt water in this kit is because it will not really work for saltwater at all. Saltwater fishing is extremely different than freshwater fishing in terms of the bait that would be used, the methods. Well, the methods would kind of still be the same, but the bait, the tackle, the line, pound test, everything would vary, and it would vary very much. But I have all this, you know, tackle I need wise. You know, I could use a little more, which is why I have the big Ziploc bag. It still is compact, but... I'm going to put these in there for now, get them pushed in there. Save some space by doing that. There we go. Zip that bag up. And what I like to do is I like to take it and just kind of roll it as best I can. Get that down there. There we go. That at the bottom. Put this one next to it. The reason I want them both on top of each other is that way these bobbers will fit better in there. Instead of having both the packets taking up the entire bottom. So, then that'll fit in there perfect as such. Just got to close it. Oh. Yeah, it should be tight like this so that you don't have to worry about... Really didn't move at all. It barely just came a little bit off. Alright, now, now one thing I wanted to go over with this too is... um. <clears throat> That when you are packing this, you don't want to, you know, just throw everything in there like, oh, yeah, that's just, yeah, that'll, that'll do. You don't want to just go like that. Yeah, that's really stupid. So we, I, what I do is I take the hooks. As you can see, I bought, I got these bags specifically so they're because of the same width as the packet of hooks. Actually, no, I didn't. That's just how it happened to be. So, as you can kind of tell, they're, well, not really because the camera's cutting out, but they are the same width. Take the hooks, put them all the way in the bottom as such. I'm, pr I'm probably going to get another size, put it right on top there. I then take this, the ammo box, fishing tackle box, put it there, and take the line, put the line right next to it. I'm not going to zip this up. I'm going to leave it open. I'm going to get a piece of duct tape here off my almost empty spool. Oh, shit. There we go. There for now. Going to fold it up like that, then back around, and then take the duct tape, put it somewhere in the middle, like that. Probably take another piece just to put it. The duct tape's not necessary. You could use an elastic band. I just have duct tape available in front of me right now. That also kind of guarantees that it doesn't, you know, open up or whatever and keeps it more compact. And that would go right into my backpack. It fits, it, it's really compact. I'm gonna say it weighs less than five ounces. I'm gonna weigh it if I can find my scale. I have a male package scale somewhere around here. I'll find it and then put that figure inside the description. But that is how you kind of make a basic freshwater fishing survival kit. Thanks for watching.